Crafty Superstar 64 Tech Videos. I'm a Superstar 64, and one of these days I will ha I will try. All right. Anyways, um, so apparently I can't plug in my camera ever. So you might be wondering why did, why did I create a problem? It worked before. Well, today we're going to be installing. OS 10.4, 10.3, and 10.5 on this PowerBook G4. I already have the uh, partitions going, so all we have to do is install the operating systems. So, we're going to do the easy one first. We insert the um, toast into the toaster. Alright. Let's see. It loads up. Well, it comes with senses and start and turn on. Place your bets now. That did absolutely nothing. All right, we got to restart. Oh, oh, it came to the senses, and now we're starting the OS 10.4 installer. So that should be up in a uh, about a minute or so. Want to watch the whole process? I know you don't, because these videos are usually over an hour anyways. And it is now blending the disc, as you can see, by the little circle in the middle of the spinner of the blender, which is now blending the disc. Alright, just kidding, because if I was blending the disc, uh, it wouldn't work. <laughs> bad joke because I have no comedy do not do I anyways um you can hear the uh, drive and blue screen of death Let's zoom out oh and we have a bunch of languages so this is set to uh, look like the uh, login screen we're gonna smack enter on that because it's already selected English Welcome to the Mac OS X installer. I've booted off the CD way too many times trying to create a backup of the old system. So, I'm going to continue here. Software License Agreement. English. Apple Computer Incorporated. Software License Agreement for Mac OS X. Single use license. Please read, this so pre please read the Software License Agreement license carefully before using the Apple software. Hmm. I can't remember if we did that before, but I don't care. I literally just downloaded this off the internet anyways. I agree. Alright, you can see our three partitions here. All 24.7 gigabytes. So we have Leopard here, which we're going to be installing 10.5 on. Panther, which is probably going to be the hardest to install. And Tiger. Or it may be no, Leopard might be the uh, hardest to install because I haven't been able to get this thing to boot off USB drives. We're going to go ahead and install on Tiger. A basic installation? <laughs> okay, we don't need X11, we don't need language translations. Um, additional fonts, yes, printer drivers. We're going to keep that on there. And, um, this. The, before there was like a million options that, um, used. 
like additional programs and stuff, but now they're all generalized in this 1.9 gigabyte package of essential system software. Also, the printer drivers. Why is that 1.6 gigabytes? So it's only going to take about 2 gigs of space on here, so we'll have plenty left over. Plus, I mean, the whole thing's just a 75 gig hard drive. Anyways, gonna install. The software you are installing requires additional installation disks. Please have these disks ready. Hmm. I don't. I ever since the original video where I just installed Tiger on this thing, I don't remember where those disks went, and I don't think if I found them they would be any good anymore. So we're just gonna continue installation anyways. I have, I still have the files on my computer. Checking your installation CD. Smack, uh, smack, enter. Skip that. We don't need the garbage. Preparing for installation. We'll be right back. Unfortunately, um, the uh, flash when I was trying to restore the migration using migration assistant, the power cut out, and you know what that means? Garbage. <laughs> so now I have to reformat that. So now we're gonna. Just, I'm probably just gonna use some archived footage, footage to see what I had installed on here and try to reinstall it from scratch. Wasn't really anything important. I don't. Think unless this thing does not have iMovie on it. I don't know. Let's open Finder. Do you have Do you have iMovie? No. So so apparently this thing does not doesn't have iMovie on it pre-installed. <laughs> so. How we're going to do Leopard is uh, different from the original plan. I'm not going to directly install it on here. I'm just going to use that flash drive to restore it onto the Leopard partition. But how we're going to install that, we don't have an... The only other PowerPC Mac I have is the G3, and that can't run Leopard at all. So you know what we're going to do? This computer can run Leopard. In fact, that's what it originally came with. It was late 2008 and Snow Leopard came out in 09 so this thing is capable of running Leopard so you'll see I now have four partitions El Capricorn, Extra, Maverick Space, and Name <laughs> so what we're going to do here we got Leopard here I'm going to go ahead and plug, plug Leopard in and should show up in a couple seconds. Even then, I'm probably just gonna do a different thing to begin with. Alright. Yeah, if you really think I was gonna keep this MacBook on the PowerBook for that long. Alright, um, so you'll see here we have the, oh, uh, screensaver mode. We have the giant X background. We have install Mac OS X, the uh, and DVD or CD sharing and the other two folders. We're going to go ahead and install Mac OS X and restart. Which password? I'll look. Okay, now I can look. And we're restarting. Keep in mind I was on El Capitan. down alt just to make sure so you'll see we have the gray screen here or it looks more white to me um, we have five options now El Capitan, Maverick Space, Recovery, 10, 11, 6 
Discovery 10 9 and Mac OS installed Mac OS 10 installed DVD. No, it's not. It's like freaking. It's 316. Get it right, Power Book. Before I destroy you. Alright. So, let me go ahead and Mac OS 10 installed DVD. Oh! The heck just ha- Oh! My computer's crashed. Is it gonna crash again? Yep. Piece of garbage. Hit my life right now. Alright, so small change of plans. This thing has always been a little bit finicky with flash drives for some odd reason. Or maybe it's just this Leopard installer, I'm not sure. And also, the Leopard installer died, so I had to use this flash drive still. So yeah, small change of plans. We're going to be using this bad boy. The 06 Core Duo MacBook. Now technically this thing is capable of running Leopard, which is a good thing. And it runs it very well. Guy connects my Wi Fi real quick. But, you yeah, might not be able to tell this, but this is uh, not Leopard. This is actually Snow Leopard. And I plan to ke technically keep it this way. So, no, connection timeout. We're going to go ahead and uh, plug in our installation media. Okay, that. Going to go to application. Oh, wait, no. We're going to go to system preference. No, not garage, man. Why would I want to do that? Anyways, um, get yeah, close. Startup. We are going to go to startup disk. You'll see three options here, 1068, 1054, and Network Startup. Network Startup isn't particularly helpful for anything, ever, but we want 1054, because that is, that is the version that is on this flash drive. So we restart. And I could use target disk mode, since uh, that PowerBook supports it, but I don't have a FireWire cable, which is unfortunate. So we actually have to do this the hard way. Oh yeah, and by the way, this is one of the lovely computer clan backgrounds, like on likewise on the other one. So if it'll ever restart. I remember the uh, school used to have my school used to have these MacBooks. Really I think I actually I think they had the O seven model. And those ran Leopard. And Leopard does not actually do the blue screen at the at the end of shutdown. It just shuts down straight from your desktop background, which I always found weird. Whereas with the Emacs that we had that ran Tiger. Oh, wait, no, I don't want to option that. Whereas with the Emacs that ran Tiger. Coincidentally, which I, also, which I have on the PowerBook G4, I need to actually update that to 10.4.11 instead of having 10.4, so it'll actually support stuff. Um, those did the blue screen. I, I love those Emacs. I also love these old MacBooks. Now, I don't necessarily have an Emac, but I do have an iMac G3. So, we have the spinning wheel and blue screen of death. You, okay then, you'll see this is basically the same screen from Tiger. Use English for the main language. And we are in the Leopard installer. Now, you may have noticed that I have only one partition on the entire system. So what we want to do is we want to, we want to go to disk utility here the good version, not the garbage one that's in El Capitan. 
So you see, I have a 160 gigabyte hard drive. So we really want to partition this. I want to do two partitions, but we want to make. Oh, hang on, no, revert real quick. Plus, this is going to be. I want to make it 20 gigs. And we want to name this Leopard. I don't think that's how you spell Leopard. Leopard Base. We're going to try that. Like on uh, how I have Mavericks Base on the other MacBook. Then apply. Because we only really want to just make a basic installation of Leopard here. So we it's modifying partition map. And this is a million times easier on the Intel GUID partition map. Because the uh, PowerBook uses the um, Apple partition map. Which, when you try to partition that, you can't do it on the startup disk. And that's why you have to back up your data and stuff. See, that's why I, that's why at the beginning of the video I had the flashing disk icon, the flashing finder icon. It's because I partitioned the drive three to three partitions, which wipes out the first partition. Whereas on the GUID partition table, it just adds it just adds it with no problem. But you'll see the blue up here represents the disk space that is that is required. So you can partition it up to that point, I think. And you'll see it's still modifying partition map here. And yes, I am just using a multi-tool as a pointer with a freaking Phillips head screwdriver. So yeah, we um, are going we're gonna wait for a little bit. Yeah, partition map's great. Map scheme, GUID partition table. Although I'm wondering if that'll be, a, will that be a problem when I put it on the power book? Well, all right. So, so the plan is after I'm after I do a complete full install of Leopard, and yes, we are going to be installing basically everything that we need that we that we want. This flash drive is being formatted, and then we'll go back into Snow Leopard. I will restore this Leopard base to the flash drive, and then we'll go over to the PowerBook and then restore Leopard base to Leopard. All while and all while we do that, all while we're doing that, we are going to be format. We are going to be changing the partition scheme on this. To Apple partition, I don't think we need to do that part. All right, so we're done here. We have our separate partition here, I think. Or maybe we just need to mount everything. No, I don't think it's fine. Oh well, we'll close this utility. Continue here. Yes, I. Okay, let's read this real quick. Please read the software license agreement carefully before using the Apple software. All right. Once upon a time there was once upon a time in a factory there was a MacBook. Blah 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 blah. Nobody gives a crap. I agree. So yeah, you'll see, um that cancel. We don't want to install it on Macintosh HD, we want to install it here. It's gonna try options here. Um Yeah, install Mac OS ten. We we just want that. We don't need to format it. Alright, install summary. Let's gonna. We don't need. I don't like X11. It's, it's giving me a lot of problems over, over time. With uh, terminal and such, whenever I try to use that. For anything. We um, don't need the language transition. Translations. That tripod issues. Am I right? <laughs> we do want additional fonts. We don't need the printer drivers because I'm willing to bet I'm not going to be using that for any school project. And plus, the printer I'd be using is either going to be just a USB a USB connection or or I'll need a disk. So we're done. And now we click install. Your computer's not connected to a power source. So when I, I solve that problem, MagSafe. Woo! 
something that's not on the new MacBooks, but it's going to be on my new computer because my new computer's five years old. We can't afford new. We can't afford new um, new MacBooks. All right, continue. Even the one that um. Even I rec I recommended a uh, MacBook to somebody else. I'm not gonna mention person's name in the video, but that person and en even ended up getting an 09 that looked just like this, except um the 07 model. They up camera issues. Am I right? <laughs> Anyways, um the keyboard's a little bit different. I I think the command key doesn't have the apple anymore. I think it has it says command. And this enter is just another option key. And by the way, yes, this when you do press this it acts as the return key basically. And also they remove numlock over top. Okay. For for comparison. Here's my main computer. This key this key this is the way this keyboard looks. This is the way this keyboard looks. Oh, pff, wrong. Now you'll see that the blank keys on here are F5 and F6, whereas on here it's F8, F9, F10, F11, and F12. And there's brightness keys, volume, numlock, which really hasn't ever been used for just about anything. And the eject key. Those are the special function keys. Other than that, uh, literally everything's just the same. And I just want to say, I think I've installed Leopard a grand total of three times now. First time was on this when I was when I was when I was trying to restore the drive. I wanted to try something fresh. Apparently, that fresh thing was. Couldn't handle half the applications I had on here before because this thing orig I originally got this thing with Snow Leopard. Yes, it was 1068. So the second time I installed it on somebody else's pow um not Power Mac iMac G5 system, and that requires some special commands to get into the flash drive. But we managed to I managed to do it using a tutorial. But it's apparently harder to do on G4, and I don't really want to. I don't really want to screw everything up on there already, even though I did already. And then now this is the third time I'm installing it on here to be restored here, to be restored there. Who knows? I might end up having. I might end up having to use Carbon Copy Cloner. Which this shoot lost my train of thought. All right, um, I'm pretty sure you guys don't want to watch the rest of this. Um, but it's actually moving pretty fast. And again, this thing does have two gigs of RAM and the Core Duo. But this, this system came out in 2007. This computer came out in 2006. Early 2006, if I'm correct. So. I'll be back when this is done. I'll sh I will show the intro video. Don't get worried. And we're going to be installing Mac OS X Leopard on this. Keep in mind, I do not actually have that DVD. <laughs> and I free I froze it on a uh, blurred up shot. <laughs> yeah, I d you can tell I don't have that DVD. In fact, I literally just downloaded a copy to my MacBook. Restore it to a USB flash drive. I like. Okay. Disk Utility is probably one of the best app, a, apps on Mac. In fact, I'm wondering if I would just get a Mac to use Disk Utility off of it. Or actually, no. I, w I wanted a tutorial at some point on how to run the modern version of Mac versions of Mac on Windows, because that is a thing you can do. <laughs> and then you can get the full Disk Utility experience. Wait. Yeah, I just remembered. I usually only ever like to use some. Um, shoot. Um. 
I usually only really like to use VM VMware on my Mac, and whereas instead of VirtualBox, because I f I found VMware on Fusion on Mac to run really well, but on Windows, actually, if you're trying to run a Windows system on Windows, like an older version, just to play like games and stuff, I'd recommend just Virtual PC 2007. Just because of how simple it is, and it's made by Microsoft, so it's designed for Microsoft systems, and the and the drivers to work. Or there's something you can just buy yourself an old laptop or something, and run all your all your old Windows games on there. I mean, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure it'll have a floppy drive, unlike modern PCs. I think they I think they stopped putting floppy drives on computers and like freaking. Um, I want to say 2004, 2005-ish. I don't know. I think the uh, the um, early X, the earlier XP computers had floppy drives, and I have two Dell Optiplex GX60s. One runs Windows XP, run one runs Windows Server 2003, and they both have floppy drives. And while I was talking. Says there's three about three minutes left. So that this is a uh, pretty fast an installation, especially I'm go I'm using it off a flash drive, of course. But if you have watched the rest of that crazy Ken video I, sh I showed, um, <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure it gets done pretty fast, despite the fact that he's using optical media, which he apparently hates to use. I love the Peter Clan. Two minutes left. Um, it feels like it hasn't even been a minute yet. Oh, well, all th while all that was going, I just want to mention <laughs> funny thing. If you look in the uh, men the installation menu bar here, I gotta turn the brightness. Down. Oh, I can't turn the brightness down, can I? Nope. remember uh um yeah apparently I have to have some white on the screen for it to work um camera am I right <laughs> all right you see there is this uh, installation actually supports airport networks so I connect my Wi-Fi here Alright, um, I can, I can have it remember the network, but, eh, it's only a one-time installation. About a minute. This thing can freaking run the internet for no reason. I think, I think there might be a way... Okay, it's probably something that uses the internet in this installation, otherwise they probably w I'm pretty sure they wouldn't include that feature. That's just a cool feature, though. It also has the, uh, battery meter which is pretty cool. And I just want to say this is a really good installer. They kept I think they kept it in um Snow Leopard and then they basically changed stuff to OS 10 utilities in 10.7. Although I did get something very 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 similar to this when I installed Mavericks because the image I have was just OS 10 base system which basically it works like OS 10 utilities, except without the utilities. It just goes straight to reinstall OS 10 Mavericks. If you know what I'm saying. Pretty sure half my audience doesn't doesn't even know what I'm talking about. Oh hey, installation succeeded. Uh, let's restart. I think we're gonna have to Alt Alt slash Option boot up this one. Because either it's going to go back into the USB or it's going to go back into Snow Leopard. Oh, I think this does have the technologies to reset the start of this. Is there a bong startup chime? That's been in the Mac since this version, that version's been in the Mac since about. I want to say, oh yeah, 1998. Maybe not, maybe on the Power Mac 
maybe 97, I'm not sure. Leopard base. So this one is selected as a startup disk. I didn't select it. So it did select it as a startup disk. So we're going to go into Leopard base. It's all fun and dandy here. I think once this is done loading, I can actually change the brightness on here. So you can see the screen actually better. That is the thing. Oh, also, I'm pretty sure you guys are looking for some holiday cheer here. So, for the rest of the video, Peter's going to have some uh, Christmas lights on it. <laughs> Alright, sweet. Here we go. Turn the volume all the way up. And. I'm pretty sure I had to do that because more and more people are coming are becoming aware of the music, and they they kept that in the uh, Snow Leopard installer. Fortunately, it now fades out. So then you saw the uh, background fade in. So yes, I am in the United States, U.S. Um, do not transfer my information now. So don't want to connect to my network right now. I should have remembered that for isolation. <laughs> it's dumb. That was easy. Continue. I love knowing the password by heart. Yep. Light's still there. I wonder if I should put him over the screen, too. It's about as far as I go. Um, shoot. Um, there. All the eggs here for the whole family. I don't want to enter my Apple ID right now. Registration information. Do I have to enter this? Yeah, I don't have to register this time. Yay! Create your account. Superstar64. Yep. I don't want to enter a password right now, so... I'm gonna go... Okay. Here. Creating registration form. Da -da -da -da. Yeah, okay. Oh, shoot. <laughs> um, wait. You guys, you guys have already seen my face. You watch Superstar 64 live streams. Hee <laughs> Alright, we're going to choose a picture from the library right here. Um, yeah, I love how it automatically just activates your camera. Without your cassette. If I hadn't, if I hadn't done Superstar 64 live streams, <laughs> that would be a disaster for me. I'd probably have to cut that part out. Alright, um... Thank you, your Mac is set up and ready, so, oh, pfft. and there goes our holiday cheer. Well, screw it. Your Mac is set up and ready, so you can back up your computer, browse your files with CoverFlow. What? Email with style. Chat using effects and backdrops, and organize your work. Enjoy using your Apple computer and Mac OS X. Go. I want to con I want to keep using my Mac. All right, let's go. Don't you just love the Aqua UI? All right, so now I have two partitions on here. All right, and it just opens up my home folder. So you can see our iconography here. We have Finder, Dashboard, Mail, Safari, iChat, Address Book, I iCal, Preview iTunes, Spaces, Time Machine, System Preferences, Documents, it Downloads, and the Trash Can. So, um, I don't want to throw the OS and install DVD in the trash can yet. 
Now usually at this point what I would what I would do is I would throw the applications folder in, but I don't wanna really mess with the system yet until we get it over to the power book. In which case, bombs away. <laughs> Alright, disk utility. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and format this part this flash drive. Actually, I'm wondering if I if I kept it, would it just be a Leopard Live USB? Remember, I made an Instagram post trying to make a uh, OS 10 Live <laughs> USB off an iMac G3. That was when I no, that was before the video was stolen. All right, so we want to erase. Actually, I wonder how much space is is used being used by Leopard Face. And you can see now the fans are kicking up. That's apparently usual with this computer. Formatting disk one S two. Say so that's um that's the uh the, the uh, flash drive's technical name. Which would be very useful if I was on the power book trying to boot off the flash drive. But we aren't doing that, otherwise I would have just installed it directly. And it's already done. This thing is freaking fast with old systems like this. So yeah, Leopard Base. Oh. So it uses 10 gigs of space. No, oh, 9.5, I'm sorry. I rounded that up to, <laughs> I rounded that up to 10. Anyways, now we want to go to System Preferences and reset my startup disk. And I'm going to keep the system on here until I have it successfully restored and bootable on the PowerBook. So, 1068 and restart. Yeah, you saw what just happened. No. So now what it should be doing is it should have reset the start of disk back to Snow Leopard, which is what we want, so we can restore the Leopard system to the flash drive. Then take the flash drive over to the power book, and then use Tiger's disk utility to restore Leopard onto the Leopard partition that we create that we that I showed at the beginning when I installed Tiger. And no, the uh, Panther video won't be shown on the Power Book. I'll probably just have it at the end. I'll probably just have it at the end or something. Dang it! I have my password, and you can see now we have the Blades background back. So we have the applications folder. Yeah, this is this is a convenience. Now I know Launchpad. This is what Launchpad is for, but I just don't like Launchpad. I've never really wanted to use that. So we go to Disk Utility, aka my favorite app. You heard the drive. So now you can see everything that I've done in Disk Utility so far on this computer. So we have, oh yeah, now it says 160 gigs. <laughs> Screw you, computer. So what we're going to do is we're going to try Restore. We want to source Leopard Base to Leopard on the flat up oh, on the flash drive. I'll be right back. Alright, so we are done with the restoration process. Not even a single error. Just came home and it was done. I checked it and there are the files on there, so now we wait for the system to start up. I don't think it I still don't think it's capable of booting off a flash drive, so right now it's booting into Tiger, which I still haven't updated. Checking out a new claim tweet. All right. So yeah, I need to I need to fix the clock. But no. Okay. Let me plug in the drive. All 
Alright, you can see now we have Leopard Base. So now what we're going to do, click Finder, Applications. Oh yeah, just let me zoom in real quick. Camera, how many times do you have to not cooperate? And now let's play the game. How many times can this camera not cooperate during a video? Yeah, just appreciate the brush metal. Metal like the laptop. Utilities. Um scroll up. This utility. The this is also the good version. This is an older version though. I mean disc one S one is still there. What is this disc one S one you speak of? Yeah, I was playing. Alright. Mount fail. Yeah. I don't wanna do that right now, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna leopard restore. Take leopard base. Throw it in the source. And this won't even erase anything. It'll just copy, basically it'll just copy the files. Leopard. I'm thinking we should try an erase destination. Because the, cause the uh, destination's already blank, right? Leopard. Yeah, there's nothing there. So we're just going to reformat just for fun. Restore. Oh, hang on, cancel. Let's not skip checksum because that could give us errors. This utility requires that you type password. password. Yes, I did change the account back to Superstar64 since I've accepted the fact that I'm not getting my data back. Like yeah, Ken said, Ken from the Computer Clan said, I'm a big fan of things that just work when you plug them in. Thank you. Aperture Tech at Aperture Tech Ken. You can see it's working. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you don't want to watch the rest of this. So, uh, we'll be right back. Oh. Yep, that fan would be the one from the 06 MacBook that I just installed Leopard on. Should I keep Leopard on that computer? So, yeah, when this is done, it should be able to boot into Leopard. Since we're directly copying basically that har that partition to this computer just with a uh, in between USB stick. So yeah, we'll be right back. All right, so that's an update. Leopard did install, and I did I did get the updates and stuff going for the other for Tiger and Leopard. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to get the system off here onto the power book. So if you're wondering, this is the iMac DV. Oh shoot, I forgot. <laughs> CRT screens. Refresh rates don't match. <laughs> Flicker vision. Oh boy. So what you're looking at here is an yeah. iMac DV with a uh, G3 DV slot loading with a DVD drive. 400 megahertz power PC G3 and 1 gig of SD RAM. This is version 10.3.5 of the Mac operating system, and I have a feeling that's not necessarily going to work with the PowerBook, but I think we'll or I think we're going to try that anyway. So yeah, you can see 2004. Um, this is before Tiger launched. So now we got to image to drive over to this flash drive. And you also may notice there's no keyboard. That's because there's no room on this desk for the keyboard to fit. So we're going to run this thing like an original Macintosh, kind of. You have inserted a disk containing no volumes that Mac OS X can read. It, we're going to go ahead and uh, initialize that because we have successfully installed Leopard. 
Well, we don't necessarily need to uh, initialize it. What we need to do here is, oh yeah, you might also notice iMac T3 OS 10, iMac T3 OS 9. I don't have anything really important on OS 9, but oh, yeah, very flickery now. I'm not sure why it got even more flickery from before. Oh, you can even see some black lines. Yes, I am looking at the camera screen. That is actually green, it's not a dark green, it's neon green, so... We're gonna go restore, like we did before. We're gonna take 14.9 gigabyte generic flash drive as the destination. Oh, okay, I can't do that. We're gonna put this as the destination. And I'm actually 3 OS 10 as the source. Erase destination. Um, shoot. I'm actually 3 OS 10. Use 7.5 gigabytes, so I'll be fine. So, actually, I think I want to erase the drive, this flash drive first. And I can't rename it now, so we're gonna just erase anyways. This so one don't have any worries. Preparing to erase. Oh uh, yeah, can't see that part. Preparing to erase. I gotta zoom out because that is looking terrible. And I also want to mention, I'm basically going to be, this thing, this system here, I'm, I'm basically transferring the soul. And you'll see that in part two when I have a little go at installing stuff on this thing. This thing will have uh this thing won't have Panther anymore. This thing is going if everything goes correctly, this thing's gonna have OS nine, OS ten public beta, ten one, and ten two. This thing won't have ten three or ten four on it. And ten four is the least you can install. I think on the uh original G threes can install up to I'm not even sure if you can all install OS 10 on the uh, first iMac G3, but I know. But I know if you can, you can only go up to Pan to Panther. All right, so looks like it's mounted now and it can't do anything. So source iMac G3 OS 10 that's still saved. Disk one S1, and if I'm correct, it should rename to the drive na to the drive's name. So yeah, restore. Restoring will erase all data on disk one S1. Continue? Okay. Not even sure why it's not yes. Oh, gotta type the password. <laughs> why does OS 10 have an on screen keyboard? So I gotta unplug the mouse. Plug in the keyboard. Unplug the mouse. into keyboard and hopefully I don't have to restart to hard shut down just to get this to work. Alright. Alright, it's working. Yeah. Authenticate. Should have just took taken off the password. Oh. Well we're gonna restart into Mac OS nine point one. On oh, I'm actually using OS 9. I'm just gonna set the keyboard aside for now. <laughs> what joys I have to go through to these videos? Mac OS 10, Mac iMac startup sound earache, and if I'm correct. This should start straight into. Good old OS 9. You can kind of see the pinstripes there off the design of the Mac. Happy Mac here. And it says, and yeah, we have Mac OS 9.1. I could have connected an external monitor, but I'm too lazy. Despite the fact there's literally one right next to the computer. It's connected to another computer. Yeah. Alright, um... I would say it will be back, but this thing that starts up 
really fast with OS 9. Like, really fast. You saw how fast that was. I already got the desktop background. I can, just, I can move the mouse. I could have done that earlier, but... Oh, yeah. And... I had the login screen enabled. Log in. And then password. See? Now it's starting. Oh, yeah, I also have this... This thing has a Palm desktop on it, if you can see. Oddly enough, I do have Palm devices. Of course, neither of them will work. This one has the nothingness screen of death, which is a black screen. And this one doesn't have batteries in it right now. I don't know why it doesn't have batteries, but it just doesn't. I gotta figure out how to fix that black screen issue before I start using those again. Also, <laughs> the uh, control strip broke. And I think the uh, menu bar is screwed up. Boy! I mean, seems like just about everything breaks. Oh. I just figured out the computer's locked up. I'm gonna try injecting the uh, flash drive real quick. And we have to now hard shut down. Be right back. Alright, uh, we're back. We are actually going to boot in from the boot picker, you can see. We ha do have the two drives, and um, it's noticed here that, um, okay, you can't see it because camera technology sucks. Ugh. Screen's way too bright. That says I'm actually with the OS 9. It has a uh, special finder icon over here, whereas over here it just says X. So the uh, little X for OS 10. Because that's how this old firmware worked. I think it's called. I think it's called Open Firmware. I'm not sure. We're gonna boot into OS 9 and. Um, I feel like I should disable that login screen. If this doesn't work, I'm just going to boot into my guest account. Happy Mac. Hello, Mac. You're probably not going to exist anymore. You'll be replaced. Yeah, I feel like I should have brought the documentation over. Oh. Disk first aid. <laughs> That's a thing. It's, ki it's kind of like a Windows 98 thing, except... Let's actually press enter when it's done. And my camera's dying, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in somewhere. Alright, so I'm just gonna take a moment to show you what I did here. Turn on the laptop. It actually makes a startup chime that on non-blown speakers. There goes a the school bus. Uh, don't forget, these poly here still. That'll work. So, um, you can see here we have... Uh, yeah, also LCD screen instead of CRT. It actually has that CRT still have to warm up. You can see, now we, ha we have two volumes on here, Leopard and Tiger. Tiger is what we had before, but Leopard... Let me just show you it. Uh, how do I describe it? Well, we gotta wait for the uh, mouse cursor. Oh, I was gonna say we have to wait for the watch cursor, but it appears to have uh, gone away. So, I'm gonna go ahead and boot here. So, we have the Apple logo. Yeah. And it does the spinning logo, but it takes like 10. But it takes like three minutes just to get past this startup screen. I still can't figure out. I get good Christmas lighting here. That'll work. I kind of see all the colors. I guess. Also, the keyboard isn't set to go on until it fully boots up. 
So you see how long this thing takes. Um, but it's good. I mean, when I first tried it this morning, it took like seven minutes to start. And it did earlier when I started it up. But once you have the hard drive warmed up, it's real. It's good. Like decent, at least. It's like Tiger. I mean, you can still notice a huge difference in performance where like click menu comes up two seconds later. It's just a slight annoyance. If you go about the smack, you'll see. Um, I'm not sure if I showed this before. First off, I did update to 10.5.8, right? So, yeah, it has 10.5.8, 1.5 GHz power PC G4. That's not where the problem comes in. The problem comes in memory 512 megabytes of DDR SD RAM. I'm pretty sure you remember the last what happened the last time I tried running a s operating system from 2007 on 512 megabyte to RAM. So yeah, <laughs> that's it's kind of slow, but it does run it. it it runs decently well. I can actually run applications on it, which... This thing is faster than I thought it would be. I thought it would be like, Jesus Christ, what the heck did I do? What the heck? Am, am I... What did... Where did I go wrong? But, that's not the case. Although, Safari... Old version says Safari, just... Seriously. Okay, this version might be able to do it because I have I updated the system, but <laughs> this morning I made an Instagram post. Oh, this might this might be even worse. Up, oh, pinwheel. Yay! I don't want to go into music. Instagram. Yeah, I made an Instagram post this morning. something on Instagram, it actually does show up in your feed. When I tried it this morning, this was what I got. You want to see it? This is the Apple website. Okay, I'm going to zoom out the camera. That is the Apple website that I had this morning. Yeah, you can see I actually did take it on the on the uh, G4. You can see the light up keyboard. Yeah, that was what I got this morning. Now this is what I'm apparently getting. Let's try Mac. Loading. Although there is a uh, version of Firefox that does work. Oh, okay. Just screw it. Mac Pro available in available December. Well, first off, it is December. Second off, the Mac Pro has existed since 2006. Third, oh wait, oh iMac Pro. Okay. Oh, yep, I didn't see the i there. So, after, so the iMac G3 that was on camera before, that's what it looked like in like 1999. Now this is what the iMac is. Imagination is a gift. iMac. The vision is brighter than ever. Okay. It, 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 this, it, this display is pretty bright. I should probably turn the brightness down. Camera. Does not cooperate. Ever. Yeah, oh. The Apple website on Weber is like kind of, it's like so surreal seeing two different generations of software. I think I'm probably wrong, but I, is that Final Cut Pro on there? MacBook Pro, a touch of genius. But not be able to plug anything in. MacBook, light years ahead, but still only able to plug in one thing at a time. So if you're charging your computer, that's all you can do. Compare Mac models. Oh, come on. They, don't, they do not have a single thing on here 
for Mac Pro. And apparently it's supposed to be coming out with a new modular one next year. Which is probably gonna be a like light years light years ahead from the uh current one, which is a freaking trash can. Uh yeah, I don't think they've shown a single thing. Uh, modular one. That'd be nice if they had, if they got, if they gave us a modular Mac Pro. Uh, Mac, I'm not sure. I'm, I don't know what to imagine for that. I know the uh, best one apparently was the original, was the original design, which was basically the same thing from the Power Mac G5, but it's basically just a regular old desktop. And they're both two. So wait, they haven't added a Thunderbolt 3 in the uh, USB-C? I am willing to bet they're going to throw that on. They're going to shove that down every professional's throat with the new one. Starting at $3,000. A.K.A. what a tough book costs. Alright, well. That's a uh, brief discussion on how this thing actually runs now. Don't forget, Tiger's still on here. I just don't have a, I don't just don't have it booted up right now. So yeah, uh, we'll be back when I get that when I get the copy of Panther, and we're gonna try. So my OS9 is a little concerning. Um, I tried booting it up like four times, and it locked up every single time. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna try something I didn't think I'd have to do. This is the in this is the Panther install disk. This thing wouldn't run in G4, right? So it does run on the iMac. In fact, that's I I got these disks with this computer. So we're gonna do is we're gonna take the disk, we're gonna put it in the dr the uh, slot loader drive here, and we're gonna boot off of that using the uh, C key on the keyboard. Holding down C, using my hands as a tabletop, you can uh, hear it reading in there. Alright then, it's booting off the CD. It's kind of hard to hear because really all, all, really all you can hear in here, I think it's either, either the hard drive or the CRT. I think CRT used to make sound. Yeah, you can see Apple logo, but no spin, no, but no spinning thing. Now there's a spinning thing. I've never known what that was called. That's why I, that's why I keep calling it, calling it a spinning thing. I know that sounds like something a three-year-old would say, would say. But yeah. gonna try plugging this uh, drive. I don't think we need the keyboard for anything now. There's no password. Also, when I look, at, when I look, I think it's just the LCD screen on the camera. When I look at it from the top, the screen looks blue. In fact, even even the video. Oh, maybe it was just the uh, CRT kind of tinting a little bit. I'm not sure. Cause now it's more gray. You'll see on the camera. Alright, we're going to be back. Yet. Or maybe now. Um, shoot. We're going to plug the camera in. We're not plugging into this thing. It's not doing anything else in the video. So, bring the camera closer. Literally, because. Yeah, I don't think there's any more room on my phone. Alright, so we are in the installer. You can see the icons here. iChat. Um, users. This is the first version of OS X to have user switching. Finder. And, um, what looks like moving windows. 
Um, shoot, where is... Okay. Oh, there it is. Open disk utility. So, correct. Yeah, now we're in disk utility. Gathering disk information. Alright. Don't you just love it when you're recording and your um, camera falls off the tripod and then you end up getting corrupted files? Yep, that just happened. So this thing is still set before March 24th, 2001. This may cause some applications to behave... To beca to behave erratically, and I can't move the mouse for some odd reason. Maybe it's just not reading the mouse? I have it plugged in. Okay, let me try and plug it in. Come on. And, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna hard shut down. I don't think the keyboard's working either. Oh, and I just put the computer in sleep mode. Oh well, close enough. So yeah, this just did restore. And I can't turn the light on. That feature's apparently unsupported. So yeah, um, this restored with no problems. Now we're gonna put in the uh, G4 and see if it works. All right, we're back at the G4. I'm, if I'm correct, this thing is, should be booted back into Tiger. Yes, it's back on Tiger. So we're going to plug in the Flash Media. iMac G3 OS 10. Alright, so now we're going to open Disk Utility and do what we did before, except this is using less, di less drive space. Huh, and that opened with one click. You could just use the applications for it in the dock or whatever. So, go to a disk utility that works very well. You take Panther as a destination, erase destination just in case. And I'm actually 3 OS 10 as the source. I, I could just partition the flash drive and have a separate OS 10 5 installer. Restoring will erase all data on Panther. Continue? Why, yes, I would like to continue. This can tell you that it requires that you type your password. Dang it. Um, shoot. Pinwheel, alright. And, yeah. Prepping sort. Oh, yeah, I just realized you didn't see any of that. Because it's zoomed way too far out. Digital cameras, am I right? Alright, so yeah, it's still prepping source material. And you, now, of course, the camera decides to zoom out despite the fact that I want to zoom in. If I go to about this Mac, um, you'll see that we are actually on 10.4.11 now. So, it is connected to our Wi-Fi network. So let's see what the Apple website looks like on here using this ver this version of Safari. And maybe I can actually install my applications while we're at it. Safari so just gives us a pinwheel apparently. I for I forget what resolution this is also. Did I mention one interesting thing about Apple's design? And this is still kind of present, but on this G4 and on and on my new computer when I get that, um, the keyboard is the same size as on the 12 in as on like the 12 in uh, for here the 12 inch or the uh, MacBook Pro the 13 inch. Keyboard's the same size, but the added speakers to the size. Like, they couldn't change the keyboard size to make it bigger. 
make it like bigger to make it easier to type maybe I'm not sure I've always never really gotten the design it's like it's like they just took the Mac took the MacBook expanded and expanded it and added a bunch of holes here and a couple speakers Oh, oh, geez. Yep, this is actually the Safari that we were using before, from 2007, because this um, version of the system's from 2000. Oh, <laughs> wow. Looks like, looks like, looks like freaking. It looks like garbage. Okay, this is like you aren't even seeing that. I mean, it was a little bit worse before because um, the web the website had like a bunch of white bars here, but you can see that bar is like the only thing that looks remotely close to the Apple website. Say hello to the future iPhone 8, a new generation of iPhone, Apple Watch Series 3, Freedom Calls, Imagination is a Gift, Shop for Everyone and Every List, Move Someone in This Holiday, Watch Sway iPad Pro. Anything you can do, you can do better. <laughs> Apple Pay. <laughs> Pay a friend with a message. Not available with iOS 11.2. Apple Heart Study. Help us drive research in heart science. Apple TV 4K. And now with Amazon Prime Video. Okay, that, that, this bottom part works, but nothing else does. Shop and learn. How about... I, how about Mac? Let's see what this page looks like. Oh. <laughs> it's not even hyperlinks anymore. What if I what if I went to web.archive.org? Oh hey, that bar is moving faster than on the G three. And again, this thing does have a this thing does have a one point five gigahertz power PC G four instead of a four hundred megahertz G three. Significant difference. Nineteen ninety nine. 2000, early 2005. I also want to mention that the, the I feel like the uh, G, the uh, Power PCs, later Power PC systems, aside from the uh, G, from the G5s, the uh, I'm gonna even include the iMac G5, because if you if you do a couple, of, if there are some intensive tasks that will ramp up the fans and make it pretty loud, but not nearly as loud as the uh, later Power Mac G5s, but other than the G5 systems, the, G the G4 and G3 systems were relatively quiet. Like, all you could really hear in that iMac was the hard drive, and it wasn't very whiny either. I don't know. Then again, all my computers are in really mint condition. I mean, aside from like a couple scratches here and there, the computers were very well taken care of. And when, once they're in my possession, I take care of them like my child. Or at least try to. If they frustrate me, then it doesn't go very well. But other than that, um, I like to, I treat my ch my lap my computers like my child. I, kind of keeps the resale value up, I guess. Because, you know, eventually... Th eventually, these things will kind of fade away from existence, and... Guess who has one? Ya yeah, boy! <laughs> yeah, okay. It's about halfway done copying blocks, I guess, so... Let's check the Computer Clan Twitter, because we do that, apparently. I'm looking for it, I'm looking for it, still looking for it, a lot of, I'm apparently following a bunch of big companies when I first started my thing, Computer Clan, Twitter, okay, tomorrow, Thursday, Crazy Ken follows up on the High Sierra rant, will his luck, what will his luck be like now, <laughs> I see the High Sierra installation screen. It's like a sin to do that. Like, 
Uh, like, I kind of think of it as a sin myself to install Windows 10. I'm a, yeah, I think we read that earlier. It may be lost, but we found a griping story that should be heard by all. Cra catch Crazy Ken's new documentary. Abandoned theater. That that sounds pretty epic. Oh, and you can also see classic OS ten screen savers. This is the old flurry. I actually have that downloaded on my Windows seven machine. Not the uh live streaming computer. In fact I plan to do another episode where I basically where I just install Windows eight point one on that thing. It's gonna be kind of a quickie. Because Windows 8.1 is like the easy, one of the easiest things to install, and to activate it all it takes a little bit of command line and a tutorial on the internet. Uh, yeah. Dead air. I'm gonna have to edit this part out. <laughs> Did I mention I also use dark mode on YouTube? <laughs> Plays it in the background, goes through the tap and does something. <laughs> oh, also, sins. Sins the tech gods. Because it's Windows 10. Yeah, that's where the thing ends. Mac OS High Sierra sucks. Did I mention that? Hopefully Apple's able to actually turn that around. So that we can all just breathe happily and just upgrade to High Sierra and act, and have a system that actually works again because Sierra works. Oh, did I mention? There's a way you can uh, turn on inverted colors here. Oh uh, yeah, I also want to mention that in uh, Leopard, they changed the icon for system preferences and iTunes. Um, also, apparently, iChat is still a thing in Leopard. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, oh shoot, it's almost done. We're gonna have to test that in a, in a minute because I'm I'm not 100 percent sure if it'll work. It was 10 to 3. Five that we're copying over, and I think if if I'm correct, this system actually came with ten three seven. So I'm not sure if it's gonna work 100. percent But that is a very easy fix. All you have to do is just download updates, like download a DMG of like the updates and stuff, and install ten three seven, which I have to do for a future video. Anyways, um. Yeah, I think it was universal access for some odd reason. Like in basically every universal access type thing, there's always inverted colors like that. Like you know the thing that makes it look demonic and stuff. Yeah, for some reason that's apparently an accessibility feature. I guess if you're I kind of guess if it helps if you're a certain type of or black, I guess? I don't know. Uh, yeah, used grayscale basically turns it graphite, but even worse. I, I've never I've never really gotten into the uh, graphite theme. Like, the aqua blue and those aqua graphite. Which turns stuff gray. Like, the Apple logo just turned gray. You can see the windows are grayer and oh yeah it's done now and it actually goes kind of well if you change your desktop background to the aqua graphite background but I, pr I prefer the blue anyways I think graphite graphite's more of a uh, OS 10 server thing so now we gotta. Oh shoot. Well, I don't know how we wanted to go in here, anyways.
startup disk. And if uh, I'm correct, yes, we have 10.4.11, which is what we're on. 10.5.8, which is not, which is probably going to be kept my startup disk because it's more compatible with just about everything. And 10.3.5. Now, 10.3.2 was a boot option before. Wait, no, 10.3.2 off the disk. What, what am I saying? We're going to try and restart, and if it doesn't work, then we're going to go on my other MacBook, download updates, and put them on the flash drive, then it open them on Tiger here, and install them, because that's a thing you can do. Actually, no, we're going to test this even easier, where you got to hold Option on Startup. So once this, once the blender goes away, Once the blender goes away, um, any minute now, any minute, I'm going to watch every second of this process. Oh, there we go. Every time I say something, it always happens at the most anticlimactic moment. Every time. I think I just wait too long to say stuff. Alright. We have. <laughs> it is a boot option. I think this might actually be the first version that ran on the system. I haven't really done much research. I think maybe it's the late, yeah, or maybe mid, 05 model that ran 10.37 by default, or maybe, maybe <laughs> it just maybe it just doesn't maybe I'm not I don't know. Somewhere I read it said that 1037 was the first system that ran on this computer. Or maybe it'll just give me the uh, prohibitory sign. Oh! Crash screen log information. Oh my gosh! I was not expecting that. At all! Ever. <laughs> well, that was a fail. I wasn't expecting any of that. It literally just said you need to restart your computer, and then a bunch of log information pops up. You don't know this is a, this is a uh, kernel panic. Let's read some of the crap here. Kernel version, Darwin kernel version 7.5.0. There's a August 5th, 1926. That's a 24 hour time. PDT 2004 released Power PC. All right, so yeah, this version's from 2004. I'm wondering if it's like the first version that was made in 2005. I'm not sure. It says "Panic, we are hanging here," and I think at this point the computer's locked up. Let's try that again for a second. and I start up chime because I turned the volume off for some reason. We're gonna we're gonna try that again. I was not expecting a kernel panic. In fact, I was honestly kind of just expecting a prohibitory sign and just for it to hang there. But no, it gave me a freaking kernel panic on startup. For those of you who don't know what a kernel panic is, still, for some odd reason, it's basically the blue screen of death, but on Win uh, Mac. Alright, so we got some good news and some bad news. Bad news is, this Pro mouse doesn't really work at all. Good news is... Panther now works on the system. I did just go ahead and throw on 10.3.9 on there, just to be safe. And and also 10.37 is probably going to be hard to find as an update, <laughs> or even as a standalone system. That'd be very hard. See, hear a car going by. Um, you can see we have the blender. <laughs> I 
I'm not I'm still not sure what that thing is supposed to be. And I wanna say it looks well, you'll see. It looks just beautiful on here. It looks a lot better than that CRT kind of thing. But I do think I have to uh fix the font smoothing in order to get it to look to get it to look the best. See OS ten, this is not ten four. You can see the background is the abstract from the G three. And the one thing in the one big thing you notice here is that that Apple logo is different. Yep. Also, it automatically opens the stickies in the docs the same. It also has Audacity here. And Internet Explorer. I'm not sure why I have Internet Explorer on here, but I, yeah, I got it with the system. So yeah, the uh, it would be more of a mess if um, I didn't rearrange the icons last night. Got the old system preferences. But yeah, it, it looks a lot better on here, but I don't think it automatically fixed font smoothing. Yeah, font smoothing is still the same for a CRT. Best for flat panel. Try to see enough if there's a difference. Yeah, it's a bit of a difference. You notice also there's an AO thing and if you go to the login window, <laughs> it has the Panther background instead of the tiger background. That's the one big thing you notice. So, your password. Yeah, so, I'm calling this job a win. So, stay tuned, because later on, I will be doing basically the same thing to that iMac. <laughs> that thing better get ready, because this is, this is the iMac soul right here. That's going to be gone from the iMac, because basically there's going to be the, uh, power mat, the, uh, power book here is Panther system. Yeah, just top the screensaver. This is before it had really anything good. The best they had was okay. The the best they had was Flurry. Everything else was just a slideshow. Desktops. Apple backgrounds. Um here's the default background. Classic is the one from Jaguar, and when I first got the system, that's what the background was. Well, this has been fun to mess around with, but I gotta, I gotta go at some point. I don't know, on a second, how is there? A oh yeah, the time's accurate and it has the announcement for the time, but um yeah, there's a uh, Cosmos screensaver here, but there's no um Cosmos backgrounds. I'm not sure. I know the um background in uh, Leopard was uh, Aurora. That was the default background. I'm, for the thumbnail shot, I'm just gonna throw it on regular aqua. And then, so yeah, I'm calling this a win. See you guys later. Hopefully you guys are it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I really appreciate it.